Implementing mindfulness in everyday habits has allowed me to unlock my inner creativity. For example, I like to express myself in the way I decorate my home. Not only is decorating a peaceful and relaxing experience to me, but I feel a sense of fulfillment and pride when I finish a decor project. Through my research of mindfulness, I have learned how our surroundings can impact our mood and overall well-being. I have noticed that since filling the walls in our home with paintings and decor, this has brought our space to life and has made me feel more energized and motivated. It is interesting to consider how mindfulness can increase one's sense of creativity. People who practice mindfulness tend to adapt their cognitive processing much quicker than those who don't. I have also used mindfulness to approach new creative outlets in a more open-minded way. This mindset has allowed me to develop a new love for watercolor painting. In the past, I have not had the patience to sit down and learn effective watercolor skills, yet I have always wanted to learn. I decided to try it out one day and promised myself I would be kind, patient, and non-judgmental. Watercolor painting is now one of my favorite pastimes, and I'm so glad I allowed myself the freedom to try a new skill. I have also used mindfulness to improve my approach to cleaning and housekeeping. In the past, doing chores has been an unpleasant and time-consuming experience. I now choose to approach chores in a pleasant and stress-free way. Some ways I do this are by focusing on one or two chores a night instead of having what I call binge cleaning days. Spending days obsessively cleaning has led me to feel stressed and overwhelmed. I will also take inventory of my surroundings while I tidy, and this has allowed me to live in the present moment. For example, when I do the dishes, I like to look out our front window in front of the sink and enjoy our wintry scenic view. I will also listen to music or a podcast, which helps me get into a relaxed and zen cleaning mode rather than a frazzled one. One effective way to implement mindfulness is through meditation. I have never been good at meditating as I find it hard to settle or relax my mind. One way I have overcome this obstacle to achieving mindfulness is through the use of guided meditation videos. I try to sit down in a secluded area, free from distractions. I will usually follow a guided meditation video, which are free on YouTube, or I will turn on a nature sounds playlist on Spotify. I have been doing this for twice a week for about a month now, and I have found it a wonderful way to start the morning. It leaves me feeling refreshed, awake, and ready to take on my day. On days I wake up and scroll through my phone, I wake up feeling groggy and unmotivated. I encourage you to start small and change little habits such as your morning routine and take note of any positive impacts you notice within your body and mind. A hard realization I have come to understand through my research of mindfulness is we are unable to completely control the future. Although I don't have control over every aspect of my future, mindfulness has helped me manage what I can control. When I have multiple deadlines to meet for school, a full work schedule, and other responsibilities, my week can look pretty stressful and hectic. One way I manage this stress is by organizing my responsibilities into a to-do list. I try to make a to-do list every week so I can keep myself on track. I consider it my form of journaling. I will also try to remember to use words of affirmation at the end. In the past, I haven't always treated myself kindly in the way I spoke about myself, my personality, my skills, and my appearance. 
Studying mindfulness has allowed me to improve my relationship within myself. If I fail to take care of myself and my mental health, I will not be able to best serve the individuals and communities in the future. Self-love is speaking kindly to yourself and knowing your worth. Alaskan winters can be beautiful, but also isolating and insufferable if you fail to go outside. One way I implement mindfulness is by going on hikes. This can be challenging during Anchorage winters as temperatures reach as low as 30 degrees Fahrenheit. A few weeks ago, I was feeling stressed with the end of the semester and needed some fresh air and time with nature. Despite it being in the negatives, my partner and I trekked to the wildlife park nearby. We almost didn't go, but I'm so glad we did as the sunset was breathtaking. It is important to live in the present and listen to what your soul needs. I knew that my soul needed to go outside and be in one with nature, so I listened to it. When interviewing individuals working at nonprofit agencies in Anchorage, the discussion of winters being isolating and lonely came up frequently. One individual working as a receptionist for AK Child and Family, a shelter for youth experiencing trauma, admitted her first winter in Alaska was dreadful because she didn't maintain social circles or really leave her apartment much. Over the years, she explained how she has implemented habits to get her through the winters. She took up skiing so she can stay active even when it's cold outside, and this has helped her meet her closest friends.